The best part about having kids is I get to relive some of those classes I loved in high school. My son recently has been taking a geometry class, and then of course I had to start playing with fabric, and this is what we came up with. We're calling it the Playful Pyramids. Let's get started. That's right, we've got a super simple project for you supplies wise today. All you're gonna need is one of these wonderful two and a half inch strips uh, setups. Now this one's from Robert Kaufman. It's called Wildberry. And one of the things I liked about it, it had a lot of the same colors as I was kind of looking through. I'm actually seeing between three and four of each color in here and that's gonna be really important while you're picking the perfect pre-cuts. And if you can't find the perfect pre-cut, get two and then you always have enough. That's my best trick I can probably teach you all day. Now, when I got my pre-cut though, I started to unpack it. And as you can see in this quote behind me, we're basically making very, very simple geometric units, but it's all about the color management. So you can see I kind of have a red side to my color family and kind of a blue side to my color family in here. And so I simply broke that apart out of my jelly roll as I got started, because I'm gonna make strip set rows before I do any triangle cutting. So here's the examples of what I've used out of my color families. You need five strips and both strip sets are gonna read from light to dark. And I'm not sure if I said this or not, but I used a total of six strip sets, three from my red reading, three from my blue reading, so that I could get this basic nine patch construction that you see behind me. Now, in order to maximize the fabric, and a lot of times I do this because I want to make sure as I'm cutting into my fabric, I get almost no waste, I have started taking on the theory of sewing all of my strips in one direction. Wait, hold the phone, stop. I know, I know, that's not what the quilt police want us to do. We were always been told to go up one strip and down the other because that helps shift things around, but I'm gonna be here to disagree with that because I believe if we take the time to sew correctly, that doesn't need to happen. Now, not all strips are always made the same length, so this can happen at the end, but that's okay. This is all part of our waist. In order for this to work for me, what I've started doing is I've shortened the stitch length on my sewing machine. Most of us are using about a two and a half millimeter. I'm using a two millimeter. The shorter the stitch length, the less the shake and move in each stitch, that keeps a nice pace. I'm gonna run a medium pace, and I've got an edge guide here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew about six to eight inches at a time, And then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna reorganize. And when I reorganize, I'm constantly reorganizing all of the fabric. And I've got another pinch back here, maybe eight inches back. Sew through and stop. And then I just do that as I go all the way through here. And it's been working out very nicely for me. You know I love to create these basic strip sets to then become part of the other units that I do. And this has really helped me maximize the way I can cut. And it just so happens with our 45 inch cuts we'll be making, we need every inch we have today. I'm just gonna finish this out real quick and we're gonna go press it. I backstitch, although I'm gonna just cut that off in a second, so you're probably laughing with me right now. So, the next thing I really wanna talk about, though, is as I begin to press this, because I'm gonna be using the seam that I've created to place my ruler, I really wanna get a really nice, good pressing. So I'm coming in here like this, I've got the right sides up of the finished. This is wrong sides to get, or right sides still together. I take my iron and I'm actually kind of using it here up against that thread. I can kind of feel that as a barrier. And then I'm letting the iron push this over for a really nice, straight, crisp seam. And I'm just gonna let that chill out for a second before I move it too, because we've all been taught that, quilt, that fabric has memory, so I don't wanna move it while it's really, really hot. I wanna let it cool a little bit. Let's move it down now to finish this out. Again, holding that work up in the air, pressing over. Beautiful. Now, I have pre-cut down triangles, and let me show you this while I'm letting that settle down a little bit, from strip sets already. Each strip set is gonna yield three triangles. Based on the nature of the triangle and the strip set, you're gonna get two one color, 
and one a different color. I know, you're like, Rob, they're all the same colors. What on earth are you talking about today? Let's give these some real names so we can talk about them for the rest of the day. I'm gonna call these my darks because it has a darker, bigger piece from the triangle that was cut. And I'm gonna call these my lights because it has a lighter, larger piece from the uh, triangle that was cut. Now follow me back to the quilt here. We're looking at the center square and I'm calling this my dark. So meaning that my dark fabrics are all the way around my outer perimeter. To get the pyramid effect to work, what we need is our darks and our lights in the same orientation in the strip sets as they become triangles. But we're gonna be matching two uh, red reading and two blue reading triangles together to form that pyramid shape. So let me teach you how to cut these triangles. I stalled just long enough. In order to do this, I really need to pay attention to what color is next to me. So this one's gonna be my dark. When it's dark next to me like this, it's gonna yield two dark and one light. And that will be important because you need five dark squares and four light squares to make this nine patch up here. And it's totally doable, but you just have to pay attention to how your cuts go. Now, if you've never made a 45 with one of these rulers, let's really focus on that right now. What I wanna be able to do is use the seam that I have already created and I'm gonna find the 45 on my ruler. I'm not looking at these numbers, so it's okay that my ruler is upside down, but I don't want it flipped over. Or maybe, I, maybe I'm not saying that right. My numbers are upside down, but I can still read them is what I'm saying. Now, I've got my eyeball across this number, 45 here. Careful, there are other angles on your rulers. So this one's my 45. And what that means is this line when I cut it is gonna be 45 degrees with all of these stripes. Now, to maximize what I was talking about earlier, I'm gonna slide this down as I'm getting in location. And I am gonna basically hit the last hole in the selvage. I want that much extra as I'm going in there. That's gonna all fall into my seam allowance and I'm gonna go ahead and make my first cut. Now as I cut across here, that's come clean and I've started the 45 degree triangle but I still need to cut the other side. So as I come over here, what I've found right now is there's, on this ruler that I like from OmniGrid so much is their lines are running in both directions. So now I can start to rotate this this way. Oops. Rotate this this way until I find my 45 line again, but in the opposite direction. Now, as I slide this this way here, my goodness, that's bad ruler management because I don't have as much line. So you can play with all different locations as you go around here to try to get your 45 cut to work. I'm not smooth at it because I've not made a lot of 45 inch or 45 degree quilts. And I know there's a lot of other templates and triangles and things. So what I'm wanting is this whole line down here when possible. Now, the last thing I want to teach you before we make this last cut, thanks for your patience on this conversation, is I'm leaving a quarter inch up here at this tip. And I just want everything in my space just right as I'm cutting. Okay, here we go. My line is lined up on my 45. I've got about a quarter inch tip up there. I'm coming through just like this, and this is going to yield one of the dark reading triangles, I'm calling that. We won't need that fall off. And I'm just gonna keep sliding this down the board. I'm gonna rotate the ruler again so that I'm using as much of the line on the ruler on that seam as possible. And now I'm gonna cut this one. And as I cut this one like this, now this one's gonna be dark on the short tip, so I'm gonna call this a light triangle, so that'll be saved for a whole other block unit. And now let's talk about this last cut. This last cut is the one that gets a little bit dicey, if I may. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a moment and just work my ruler around. But what I have found, even in my best practices, I only have a couple of inches to read down here on this last. So what I like to kind of do is I like to kind of eyeball the line of the mat running all the way through the line of the seam. So then I can run the line of my ruler a little bit. And I can't guarantee that it's gonna be perfect, but the cool thing about this is we're actually working on the bias. And I'm gonna show you as we begin to sew these together, we've got a little grace. And isn't a little grace just enough? I love that. Okay, so here we go. Now let's build one of these squares I was just talking about. So let's take a couple of these um, dark units here and, oh, let's get these completely out of the way. 
and I had some of my other dark units already um, prepared, I believe. Oh, there they are from the red reading family. So let's just take a moment and look at our orientation. They're gonna be opposite layouts. So these are gonna to come together like this and like this. And at this point, all we need to do is start joining our seams together. So let's come over here. I want everything to be starting off of my center point and I'm gonna finger or pin match all of those seams as I go. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna to come to my triangle tips, the small triangle tips down there. If we have to trim or square, I'd rather square off the outer edge than the inner square. So now I'm just gonna go, and I'm really paying attention to that seam allowance right there. Now I'm gonna just pause, I'm gonna realign if I need to, and I'm just, and I'm not putting too much pressure down here because it is on the bias, it could stretch. And this also really helps with that two millimeter stitch length instead of the 2.5. Now this one, one of my strips was a little wonky it looks like, so I just encouraged the lower strip to fit to the upper strip. And I just do this the easy, easy. And of course, if you want to pre-pin, you can. I've just never been one for using much with pins. And I really encourage you not to try to chain piece all of this because you're gonna to wanna to know where each unit lines back up. So right now, what I'm gonna do is as I open this up here, oh boy, that sure turned out nice, didn't it? I wanna focus and make sure I get this tip here, this seam here, not this one. This is what I'm looking for. So I'm like, come on, come on, right there, right here, right with me, here we go. And then I got it, no problem. Now we're gonna start again on that little triangle at the top. We're gonna do the exact same thing. And I'm just matching up where my seam allowances on the two and a half inch strips came together. We'll go a little quicker this time. All right, and then let's just sew all the way through those corners. Make sure we keep that seam allowance really accurate if possible. Now, as I come back over, let's just press to the blue side, we'll call it. So I'm holding that up in the air. Like that. Boy, that looks good. I'm excited about this project. <laughs> I've been wanting to do one of these for so long. Now I press to the blue side, so let's do that same on the other triangle. We never press this one open. I just got right into the sewing. So we still need to press this one. And now we can just join that big center seam. And just like before, we have all of these seam allowances to help us along the way. So I'm just going to fold it in half, right sides together. And now I'm going to come on up here and I'm going to start to match them and do just what I did on those first two. So let's get this, make sure everything's got a good start, off to a great start. And as I begin stitching this, I'm gonna go into caffeinated mode. And if it's your first time watching a man sewing video, caffeinated mode means we speed up the cameras, not the machine. So don't try to sew this fast, just watch this. So we'll get right back to the next step. We'll see you in a second. All right, we'll slow it back down there for you. And we've gotten that entire seam created. So let's just go ahead and take a moment and press it before I give you the whole reveal because it'll look so much nicer that way. And I really like this method of just holding it in the air to flop it back over then. There we go. Awesome. So there you have a unit, like I said, and this one I'm calling the dark. And if you look at the quilt behind me, there are five of them because it's a basic checkerboard or nine patch layout. So one of the dark units in each of the four corners and then dead center. So then you have your four light ones to fill in the space, build them. So these side seams together and then build your rows, just like you'd be constructing them if they were small little blocks in a quilt, right? They're just bigger versions of the same kind of fun stuff we do here every day. 
And then for me on this one, I wanted an all over geometric quilting as well. So this one was done on a long arm with a pantograph or computerized machine quilting done at Missouri Star. And I love the results of it. I did use a variegated thread in that. I had to put in a little special request for variegated thread and I love the finished effect. I'm not sure if they'll do that for everybody. I probably just got myself in a lot of trouble, but trouble is what we're all about. Even if you're taking geometry, it's not that bad. Enjoy the mathematics of the craft that we do right here at Man Sewing. Oh, hey, are you still in here? I thought you would have been checking out some of those other great videos. You know, we've got a link there, over there. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you never miss a minute of the action. We'll catch you next time at Man Sewing.